Okay, thank you for your time today. Um, Xiaoping and I are going to uh, share this half hour of presentation, and I'm going to start first by giving a basic overview of the technologies of uh, surface plasmon resonance and isothermal titration calorimetry that are used in, in Dr. Tumer's lab uh, by Xiaoping to give an overview of how they're applied in drug discovery and development. So we call, we call these uh, technologies and how they relate to each other orthogonal in, in, the, in the fact that they are, they, they have common, they give you some common information uh, about interactions, biomolecular interactions, and that being the affinity of the interactions, but they each provide their own unique uh, pieces of information that are important throughout the drug discovery and development process. So this slide is just meant, it's, it's, it's uh, very, very much a uh, overarching description of how the technologies are used, but um, we just saw a very interesting presentation about thermal stability uh, and measurements of thermal stability. Uh, differential scanning calorimetry is a, is a, is a technique that also uh, is a force degradation technique that provides thermal stability of a protein or a biological uh, molecule, and it is used throughout the drug discovery process, mostly in formulation development to understand what what excipients, what, what, what conditions make a biological most stable. Um, and uh, we're not gonna, I'm not going to spend much time on that technique today. What I am going to do is talk a bit about what the data for ITC and SPR looks like so that when Xiaoping shows some of her data that they've um, obtained in the work that they've done with rice and toxin, it makes a bit of sense to you in, in terms of uh, the value of that information. So, um, as I mentioned, ITC and SPR both give affinity, but they also give much more than that. And uh, isothermal titration calorimetry also gives you the thermodynamic profile of that interaction. We'll talk a bit more about that in subsequent slides. And it also gives you the true stoichiometry of that interaction. So um, it fits nicely with SPR to confirm one-to-one uh, -one binding, if, if, if it were, for a particular interaction. Uh, SPR, on the other hand, uh, defines for you what are the association and dissociation rate constants for a particular interaction. And I'll show you some examples of data and, and why that might be important. Um, it also can be used as an indirect measurement of the, th of the thermodynamics of an interaction uh, by looking at the uh, kinetics at, at, at different um, heats of, of reaction, but it's not a direct measurement of thermodynamics as ITC is. Um, so it's, it's typically used on the biological side or for antibody development, SPR that is, um, in uh, screening for hybridoma selection. It's used um, with purified antibodies for understanding, uh, uh, performing epitope mapping experiments for, um, uh, for characterizing various isotopes of, of antibodies. And then downstream in the biopharmaceutical industry, the technology is used to give not just the concentration of a particular biological, like that which you could get from IC50 or some other techniques, but to give you the active concentration of that biological molecule. So the concentration of it that can actually perform its binding function. That's how many of our customers, uh, especially locally here in New Jersey, use SPR um, in uh, release testing and quality control. Uh, and as a um, study of stability and, and, and active concentration through their manufacturing and purification processes. Um, it could also be used, SPR, this is a growing area, but to define the uh, immune responses, that is the unwanted immune responses for a particular drug. So to characterize and isotype the anti-drug antibodies that uh, a particular drug might, um, might cause in, in humans. So as I mentioned, the, the things that kind of bring them together uh, and, and, and that it can be, the, these two technologies can be used for confirmatory-wise are as different ways of deriving the affinity of a particular action. But what I'd like to um, d discuss today is how the affinity is just one piece of the picture and how the association dissociation rates and the thermodynamics provide a better picture. But before I do that, I just want to give an idea f uh, or a sense for what, what the matrix, what the environment is of the samples that uh, the data that Xiaoping will be showing. So this is just a cross-section of an SPR um, flow cell, I guess it really is, in that it, it shows the chemical matrix that the uh, experiment, how it's run. 
So all beta core experiments are run in real time. We're detecting these interactions real time without any labels. Um, and it's, it's really a mass derived uh, um, uh, uh, technology, meaning it's going to give you the binding rate by detecting the mass at the sensor, the biosensor surface. So this is a picture of a cartoon of one of our chips. And these squiggly blue lines are the dextran or gel matrix uh, for which the, one of the binding partners uh, is, is covalently bound by amine coupling. Uh, and those are the green uh, circles. Or they can also be uh, captured via, um, via, via his tag, via uh, uh, streptavin for biotin labeled uh, uh, compound or molecules, proteins. And, um, or they could be captured by capture antibodies. And so the, uh, the, this, this, this environment is, is, is a, a microfluidic environment. And the second binding part, and, and, and this immobilization is all happening uh, in a continuous flow system. So you're immobilizing one of your two binding partners, and then you are uh, flowing over that same surface, your second binding partner. In this case, um, we call it the analyte in, in our via core language. These can be protein, protein, protein small molecule, antibody antigen, uh, nucleotide protein. Um, th and there's a whole host of, of, of matrices for, uh, for, for accomplishing this immobilization. We also have matrices for um, reconstituting lipid membranes and micelles at the chip surface. We have more information about that at our booth. But this is just to show that, um, to give you an idea for uh, how the technology is working, um, and, um, and I'm not going to go into any detail about the, the detection system, um, but this shows you how the samples are uh, being immobilized and how they're managed at the biosensor surface. So this is what the data looks like. Um, our, our latest and greatest um, platforms are the Biocore T200, which you see a picture of here, which, which they have in the SEB uh, laboratory. And uh, on the microcal side is, is the ITC 200, which the, la the core lab also has. So this is what we call a sensorgram. And the sensorgram is a plot of the response over time. And the response is, is, is the y-axis. Uh, it, it helps me anyway to think that it, it really, as I said, is a, is a, is a measure of mass. So I, I always like to share a factoid that at that cell surface, one response unit, if you say, well, what does this mean? It's, it's equal to a picogram of protein, or of anything, really, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a square uh, micrometer within the cell. Within the cell. And we're, look, we're using very low, uh, uh, very low um, amounts of protein, microliter scale of protein in continuous flow. And so all of the systems, all of the, the BioCore systems have an experimental cell and a, and, a, and a control cell. The control cell will normalize out or, or subtract out all of the nonspecific binding that might be happening to the dextran itself. Um, and so our zero point, if you will, the normalized zero point is really the, 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 the mass and, and, and the, of, the, of the buffer and of the first binding partner that's bound to the chip. So that's, what, that's our baseline, is that, is that mass for which the first binding partner has. As we flow in solution, our, our second binding partner, the red analyte, as, as it was depicted in the previous slide, uh, we have an association phase of the interaction. And so this is, this is the, uh, the, the curvature of that, that slope is what is the rate or the association rate of that interaction. Then the system switches to buffer uh, to dissociate that, that complex. Uh, and we have our dissociation phase of that interaction. So that is our complete uh, curve. Uh, to get a, f a kinetic profile, you run your, uh, your, your samples at multiple concentrations. And there's, there's, so it's the curvature of those association dissociation rates uh, uh, slopes, which are your on and off rates. Sometimes, depending on the way the assays are run, if it's, for example, um, to screen a library of compounds or to perform a fragment screening maybe methodology to, uh, to understand how different moieties and, and things interact with your target, you may not care so much about the whole curve. You might just want to know, does it bind or doesn't it bind? And you might want to compare that response to uh, others within your library. So that's why 
uh, many applications simply use a report point. It's, it's a time post buffer injection in seconds that gives you the response level for that particular sample. And then you can compare the response levels uh, for your compound library or for your hybridoma screen, whatever, whatever the case may be. So the, the information that we get directly from it is, of course, uh, uh, on and off rates and then affinity, which is a, the association of, of uh, on and off. But based on the assay design, based on what else you're uh, immobilizing on your subsequent flow cells, because the system has four flow cells, you can set up your assay to understand the specificity of binding for your particular protein or for that particular construct. Um, and then, of course, we can get our affinity. And we could, as we mentioned, get our kinetics. Uh, and I mentioned also um, this same methodology is used to derive the active concentration of our, of our uh, molecule. Why is that important? Well, when we just look at endpoint assays or when we look at affinity alone, um, that affinity is a combination of the on and off rate, and that could be derived by very different contributions from those two factors. Uh, so this might be, uh, you know, oversimplifying maybe the pharmacokinetic uh, implications of these on and off rates, but the point is, is that these are two molecules that have uh, very similar affinities, yet as you can see by their um, SPR profile, they have very different kinetics or very different contributing uh, association and dissociation rates. Um, so this can, uh, you won't see these with, with an endpoint assay. And so, you know, this, this just, I, I guess we, we tried to uh, kind of link this to, you know, a, a drug uh, 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 profile or, or, or but you can imagine that a, a drug, the first blue profile is, is one in which you commonly get a very fast on, very fast off. That's a very common small molecule profile. And so, the, you know, maybe that would require a, a more frequent administration. But really, that kind of profile is used for selectivity of a particular drug and then subsequent studies thereafter. But a slower uh, kinetic profile, you know, might imply a, a smaller uh, um, administration or slower administration. I think more <laughs> studies than that go into uh, pharmacokinetics, but that's just to bring it to a real-world example. So, um, so just to give a, a, an introduction to these ideas, um, we can also get KD, K big D, or affinity um, by I ITC, and uh, that's what I'm going to segue into now is to show the kind of type of information that isothermal titration calorimetry gives, but you can understand how uh, off rates um, uh, are correlated to residence time and how uh, the, the recognition time or the, is, is, is uh, correlated to your, um, to your association rate. So um, now, as I mentioned, both ITC and SPR will give you your affinity, uh, but ITC does it in a very different way and also gives you other information about the mechanism of action for that particular, um, for that particular uh, uh, interaction. So this is just a description or a summary of the type of information you get from ITC and uh, a, a visual display of, of how that might be important for a particular, um, for a particular uh, interaction. So the, uh, the overall KD, you know, you can get through other methods. We, we've, we've covered that. But the uh, total energy of that particular interaction, which is measured directly uh, in the cell, this is a the, the, one of the benefits of, of this type of technique is it's a solution-based experiment. It's, it, it doesn't require any type of, uh, much, less, um, much less assay development than SPR. And uh, it allows you, in, in, by measuring your interactants in, in solution, you're titrating in your second binding partner, and you're getting from the, uh, the, the, the profile that that, that that derives, you're uh, obtaining your enthalpy, which is directly correlated to, uh, to hydrogen bonding, to, to, to Van der Waals uh, interactions. You're also uh, getting a direct measurement of the uh, contributing factors more along the lines of hydrophobic interactions, such as your, your entropy uh, uh, calculation. And then, really importantly, you're getting your stoichiometry also of your binding. And this can be used to correlate uh, to understand how much of your particular sample is active uh, based on the, the stoichiometry profile for that interaction, and how these are usually um, how these are usually described or 
uh, much in the way we showed that uh, an, an interaction with a, a similar KD can have different on and off rates. Here's an example showing s three different interactions that have the same overall heat of interaction, which is shown by the blue uh, graph, the delta G, the overall heat of that interaction. But as you can see, the, uh, the interaction labeled A is really um, is, 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 is very strongly driven by uh, hydrogen bonding by ent uh, enthalpic uh, contributions. So you have very good hydrogen bonding, but possibly an unfavorable hydrophobic or conformational changes. Uh, the second, conversely, is really dominated by uh, the uh, entropic contribution by the hydrophobic interaction, whereas uh, the third uh, is said to have a more favorable or a more balanced contribution of the hydrophobic and the, uh, and the, um, and the hydrophilic or the uh, interactions. So I, that, that's all. I, I just wanted to give a, a brief uh, description of how these, what, these, what this data looks like. Um, I left out the application examples because Xiao Ping, in addition to talking about her training class, also has included some actual data from the work that she's done. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Xiao Ping. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, in the work with the vehicle facility uh, uh, on the. Uh, the co facility work on the vehicle instrument. So I give, today I give you a brief introduction about uh, the course we offered during the end of the spring uh, semester. Also, I will show some uh, applications we have uh, used this instrument to uh, do a different kind of interaction studies. So the course, first I talk about co course is a three-day course. Uh, the, uh, the first day is a, is a lecture uh, by the scientists, the field scientists from uh, GE Healthcare, and uh, the uh, it's a, it's a fundamental course. So it's uh, by you can uh, the the they will they will they will talk about the technology overview, uh, and also uh, they will tell about uh, what you can uh, do use this vehicle in instrument, what kind of measurement you can uh, you can information you can get. And also, uh, after this brief introduction, uh, we have an uh, instrument tour. We really bring you upstairs to look at the instrument and the chip they used. And uh, after that, uh, we have uh, um, tell you about how you prepare the surface and uh, uh, control the immobilization. Because as uh, um, previous uh, speaker, you have to immobilize one of your partner interaction partner on the chip. Then the other partner passes through the surface in the buffer. So then we're going to uh, tell about how you prepare this chip. Uh, after that, then you have to optimize your assay, especially if you wanted to see the, inter uh, the kinetic analysis. It's need a lot of work to op optimize and make the trustable data analyze. And uh, also, of course, you, because one of your partners is on the chip, so you have to regenerate the surface after each circle. So you can do the second, because you do different concentration titrate for you get the kinetic analysis. Uh, and also the, the automatically method for the instrument, and also he will and uh, will talk about a little bit about the maintenance instrument. So this is the first day all free. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, all lecture, whole day course. And uh, the day two and the day, day three, I was going to teach the hand on experiment. So we have designed uh, uh, two uh, group of experiment. So the first day we will do um, the very commonly used uh, for the. Uh, CM5 chip and, and amine coupling to immobilize one of the protein on the chip. Uh, this is then you have to uh, first to determine what the pH is, is optimal for your immobilization. And uh, then we're going to prepare the surface. After the sur surface is prepared, we will uh, do an experiment on protein and the ribosome interaction that we developed in the lab uh, using the CM5 chip. and. Uh, this is like the experiment that takes whole day. Then we set up the automatic run overnight to do the kinetic uh, running. Then after that, uh, the second day, we go going to do the analysis the, from the first overnight to generate the data. We do the, uh, the data analysis. And also at the same time, we, we do another uh, experiment is use the capture method. That in that way, is, uh, is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about later. Each one. The capture method is you, you use the uh, 
different chip, so you can capture your one uh, in, uh, pattern on the chip in this way, so the, the, the one pattern on the chip is relatively more active than the, the immu immuno, uh, the amine coupling, the permanent covalent link method. So we second that we do another method, so you give you the people idea, you can select, they have different way to do design your experiment. So because of the limitation of the instrument, so this, uh, this uh, participant is for the hand-on. The first day is open to public. The second, uh, and the, the hand-on experiment, we have to limit it to six, uh, four to six people. And uh, we provide all the materials. Then also, if you have some sample ready, we will also welcome you bring your own sample to try. Uh, so this is about the cost. In the, in the uh, following uh, sec uh, several slides, I will show you some of the application I have used the, with the instrument in, our, in my own research. Uh, so the application, is, uh, as uh, case one, I will show you the uh, immobilization, uh, one of the pattern on the chip permanently. So there is a several method. Uh, is a, is a G has the, the kit you can do the covalent immobilization depend on your protein. So this is mainly for protein. And also uh, with the strapped and everything uh, chip, you can also labeling. If you have a small molecule, you know where you easy to label your uh, molecule with a uh, biotin. So you can also capture them. And because the biotin, uh, they have strip everything coated the chip. Uh, this interaction is very tight. So when it's interact, the biotin and strap everything interaction, it's, it's the, also the biotin label the molecule is on the chip permanently. So you treat it as a permanently on the chip. So this one has a uh, disadvantage, and the, the, the good part is the, the relative, the, the, the molecule on the chip is relatively stable, so you, you don't see any drift on the surface. So it's, uh, uh, that's the advantage also is for something you don't know. You just want to say you don't know anything about this interaction stuff. Maybe this is the first thing you to try. But uh, the, the sense is this, in this way, as I said before, the, because the one pattern is permanent on the chip, you have to regenerate the surface every circle. So this sometimes is relatively easy. Uh, it's uh, maybe just the, some salt or some buffer you wash, it just goes off. And sometimes it's relatively difficult. So you really have to figure out the conditions for this method. Uh, for this, I will show you one of the, uh, I have studied this. Is, uh, we studied toxin, the rising toxin. and. Uh, we, uh, we know so this is ricin is a, is a plant toxin. They have a, uh, a B chain. For this one, is a holotoxin. The white is the B chain, and the color part is the A chain. And in this, in to, toward the cell, the holotoxin is very toxic because they need the B chain to help the toxin get into the cell. Once it gets into the cell, the B chain and the A chain have to be sub separated. Otherwise, if you treat it in the cell free system because the target is ribosome. If you treat the ribosome with uh, holotoxin, it's not actually it's not active. Have to be treated with HN. So we, we try to see why this is the toxin, why it's not active to the ribosome. So we, we, we first want to see whether it's interact with ribosome or not. Uh, if if it's if there's any difference of those two interaction with the ribosome, and if it's interact, what's the kinetic of the interactions? So for this study, we I put those uh, two. Uh, either I, uh, ricin A chain or holotoxin on the chip uh, in different channel. So when you, when you pass the ribosome on the surface, on the channel with holo ricin toxin, we don't see any interactions. So they, they couldn't interact with ribosome. But on the channel, at the same time, on the channel with the A chain, so we see nice dose response interaction. So this is uh, monitored at the same time as we can see is the, is the off and on, the on uh, trace is nicely responsed. So with this, we can calculate from those uh, response curve with different concentration, we calculate this interaction, uh, the KD is in the nano uh, molar region. So, it's, so that's a ha uh, partially explain why the ricin holotoxin is not in cell-free system, they are not actually active. Uh, so this is one example. Second, uh, second case, I will talk about the different method for you to capture on the, on the surface. Uh, so in this one, because of the capture, each the regeneration surface uh, conditions is al already mod uh, mod uh, optimized. So it's relatively easy. You don't know if you are a partner and your two partner interaction, if it's very tight, couldn't uh, strip them off. So you don't need to uh, like spend more time for, to, to optimize the regeneration because it's already, so every time you capture your 
every circle on the chip is fresh partner, so it don't lost any activity. So this is another advantage. So th they have different ways. Uh, one is you can use a biotin capture chip. This is different. The, the biotin is not permanent on the chip. You capture each circle on the chip. That, uh, so with this, you can regenerate it easily. So each, it's relatively, I would say, compared to the other methods. Maybe you need more partners if your protein is not, or your, 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 your compound is not limited. And also, uh, for the antibody, uh, they also have the anti-human or anti-mouse, depending on the antibody you study. Uh, so you can capture your antibody, use the anti-human or anti-mice antibody on the chip, and then capture your, the antibody you're interested on the chip. So each time you capture a fresh one, because antibody, antibody antigen interaction is a relatively uh, matured method to, to rege regenerate it relatively easy. Uh, also, they have also NTA chip. You can, a lot of people study in the his tagged antibody. So we studied also. So you can use his antibody. So NTA, his interaction is relatively easy to regenerate. So I'll give you um, uh, three also applications we use. The one is to use the uh, biotin uh, capture kit to capture biotin related. This is the biotin related uh, peptide. One of the peptides we studied with the toxin. So. Uh, this is uh, use a single kinetics method, so you can see nicely interact uh, on and off curve with this uh, toxin and uh, and uh, uh, peptide interaction. So this interaction is very it's a fast on fast off. Sometimes it, uh, I think also uh, some people come study also some protein protein interaction also ha could happen is in this way. So this is fast on fast off. Normally you it's very hard to detect with other biochemical method because if you do the pull down anything, if you, once you wash one wash is completely gone. You barely to see those. But with the vehicle instrument, they use very little small amount of protein. You'll be able to see the interaction. Also, it's. Uh, with those, you can, you, you can imagine is with those, you, if you want to confirm with other methods, give you the idea what method you should use, how you should strip them, how, how you'll be able to detect. So this is the, uh, one of the uh, uh, study we have. Another one is the uh, antibody. We also use the antibody to capture the, we have an RT antibody, and uh, uh, they try to map the epitope of this antibody on the RTA, uh, the protein surface. So we have a RTA mutant. And uh, with this antibody, we RTA antibody, monoclonal antibody, we capture uh, with the mouse antibody, capture them on the surface. When we pass the Y type, uh, RTA, you see nice curve response and the dissociation very, very slow for the red curve. And uh, with this mutant, because this uh, antibody was uh, the, the epitope is on that one of the mutation side, so you will see very fast the dissociation on the on this one. So it's very also another example to you to use this to study the to map the epitope of the antibody. And uh, the third, uh, I will show you also use the histag the uh, protein. We study protein protein interactions, and in this case. Uh, uh, because we, we identified the toxin interact with the ribosome stock. So uh, uh, if the people, we, we know, so study ribosome, the ribosome stock has you know, several uh, uh, pair uh, of uh, P protein, P, P1 and P2 dimers. So far, we, we still really don't understand why the, they need like a normally human or, or has like pentamer structure. It's like have two dimers plus a C terminal of P proteins. Uh, I think it's for the bacteria when they study they, they study thermal bacteria depending on the temperature grow, uh, temperature and the environment of this bacteria uh, bacteria growth. They have they can be uh, hectomers also. So they so people don't know why they need more copy of this protein in this uh, in this uh, ribosome stock P protein stock. So we study their interactions with toxin. We, we know the toxin mimic uh, the translation effect, also attack this, uh, use this uh, structure to access the substrate on the ribosome. So we study their interactions with, uh, we have a, a in, vi in vivo synthesized purified the pentamer complex and also the trimer complex. So when we do the, st uh, the kinetic studies, after we fit those kinetics, we found that the, with the pentamer structure with multiple copy, the association and the it's much faster than with, with the trimer copy. So this also tell you why, th if, if it's a translation factor do the similar ways, we was, it was, you can imagine it's a much higher translation rate in these conditions. So this is uh, also we kind of indicate why, why the, 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 the animal, when, when the cell grow in a different environment, they need a different 
uh, structure. So, so I, I, I summarize, I, I, first I talk about the, the course. Uh, it's, uh, it's on end of each uh, semester and the cover lecture and the Hanau experiment. And uh, if you, I uh, encourage if you really think uh, you might be used this method, I encourage you to come to the lecture. At, le at least you know kind of idea what you can use for this uh, technicals. And if you really have something is ready, you think you want to try, I encourage you to send some students to come to the hand-on course so uh, we can really try your samples. So after, I think after the course, if you really want to use treatment, I will uh, help you design your experiment to do it. Uh, also, I, I, I just briefly talk about the application we have used. So uh, you, we, we have different uh, ways to you, for you to immobilize your pattern on the chip. So it's uh, really have to design ahead which one you want to use. And uh, we can do yes, yes or no interactions. And also we can tell what's the kinetics. And uh, if you have small molecular inhibition study, also they have different ways you can do that. And also for the antibody uh, uh, epitope mapping. And also, uh, there is another uh, chip we haven't covered, is the lipid, lipid protein interactions. Also, they can generate in a lipid environment. You can study lipid and lipid with some other small molecule interaction. So that one, I, well, I haven't covered it for today. So with this, I thank you for your attendance, and this is my contact information. <laughs>